The phrase I'm before you except after C is taught early on in learning English, but over time you figure out just how weird it really is. I promise this is actually a really interesting question. First of all, we have to pick apart what the phrase really means. I think it's fair to assume that IE is good as long as it isn't after a C, and conversely, you must also only have an IE if you aren't after a C. It's then quite a simple task to then just check every single word as it comes in. Is it valid? Is it not? Does this rule suck? Or does it work? And by the title of this video, you can probably tell it doesn't work very much. It sucks. Well, some quick stats for you after running the program. Out of almost 400,000 words that were in the dictionary that I managed to find online, about 350,000 of them didn't contain an IE or an EI, so they're useless for determining if this rule is useful or not. This leaves us with about 18,000 words to play with, which is only 4.7% of all the words. Before I break down the precise percentages of what I found out, let's start with just the extremes. Let's go for the biggest word that breaks the rule. Tetraiodophenylphalene is the foot... How do I say that word sort of-ish correctly? Or at least the best I've said it at all this entire take, and then I mess up the the. The the. I messed the the. Tetraiodophenylphalene is the 24 character long absolute mad lad that just my English teacher would be scared of this word. It's tied right up there with scientifical philosoph- Scientific philos- Which is the philosophy of science, also at 24 characters. But I personally don't oh. think these really count as words. Both of them are either chemistry garbage or portmanteau garbage. Not allowed. If we step down to 23 characters, we get my personal favourite. Pre-inferred, pre-inferring, which is literally the same word, just copied twice. <laughs> hey, if it's a word, it's a word. I think I'm going to do some post-interfered uninterfering to remove this word from the list because this really doesn't count either, let's be honest. Don't get too upset or I'll have to deinstitutionalize you, which is my pick for the true longest rule-breaking word at 22 letters long. I think I've pretty much just revolutionized the English language finding the word that long and that important, which breaks a fundamental rule that we've all been taught. Let's hope my English teacher isn't one of those counter-revolutionaries coming along to ruin all my fun with an equally long word that does follow the rule. This fight isn't over, is it? Okay, okay, we came to a stalemate at the high end of the words. Let's let's go right for the lowest ones, the smallest words that either break or don't break the rule, and see if we can draw any conclusions there. There's quite a lot of short words that try and prove this rule, actually. Die, fi, die again, hi, which admittedly I've never heard of before, but I'll allow it. Lie, lie again, chai, oh god no, not this again. Well, I can't argue with Collins. Chai, C, whatever. It's the shortest word that breaks the rule. And it does so so triumphantly. It is literally the shortest possible word that could break the rule. Because it only has the three letters in it that constitute the rule in the first place. I, I think that just blows all the other ones that pass the rule at three letters long completely out of the water. So, it's not looking good. So far I've classified everything as passing the rule or failing the rule. But if a word was, let's say, 50 characters long, there could be a word which has an EI which passes the rule, and then a CEI which fails the rule somewhere else in that same word, being a sort of middle word that is both passing and failing, that it's basically the Sweden of words. I wrote some admittedly inefficient Python code, let's say, to try and find the words that couldn't make their mind up, that does its job, but it didn't find any. Stop, wait, it turns out I was completely wrong. I ran it again and found 126 of them. So here are my 20 something second rundown and what I found, starting now. The shortest middle word is fear. It means how active you are. Lovely, but not as active as when you have to type out the longest word. Fidai commissionaries, who are people that receive gifts on behalf of others. Speaking of gifts, it's almost Christmas time and all I want for Christmas is a Lamagaya. A rare vulture, also known as that. Found in South Europe, Africa, Asia, and also laughs in the face of the rule by following and then breaking it in the most efficient way possible. What an absolute gorgeous legend. Okay, back to the slightly less useless part of this video. So, the numbers, what do they mean? Well, I can tell- So, the numbers, what do they mean? Well, I can now say that of the 17,683 words I managed to find that have an I or an E in them, 12,926 of the words do, do in fact pass the rule. So, you know, not terrible. 
but that leaves almost 5,000, 4,757 words that don't follow the rule. That's 26.9%. 26.9%. That's how terrible this rule is. Knowing this really is as pointless as it sounds. God, it's a good thing kids learning English don't care as much about this completely pointless and irrelevant fact as I do. Tetraphenodophilophylline. <laughs> Tetraidi... Tetri... Tetridiphenolphaphylline. <laughs> Remember that no code is pointless if you had some fun writing it. And as always, happy coding.